So today I'm going to cover a little bit about what you need to think about from a supply chain perspective to manage the key Brexit risks. Number one, know what your end-to-end -end supply chain looks like to uncover counterparty Brexit risk. So do you know your critical products and parts, whether that's specialised components or quality raw materials or the packaging that, that those goods come in? And that visibility of the supply chain is relevant to all businesses, whether you're making supplies of goods or services. Next, think about moving goods cross-border and how that will work. So a couple of issues here. First, thinking about border delays and the additional transit time that that will take. The recent Yellowhammer document estimated that a reasonable worst case scenario could mean that there are one and a half to two and a half day delays for heavy goods vehicles that are trying to cross the border. And that will present a particular problem for businesses that are making perishable goods, but also if you have stringent delivery timeframes in your contract. Think also about the customs clearance forms that will be required. This administration and documentation is new for many businesses and for others it represents a significant increase in the volumes that they need to manage. Turning then to market access. So here there will be both tariff and non-tariff barriers to trade. So there will be additional duty costs the EU will impose tariffs on goods that are coming from the UK and the UK will impose tariffs on goods that are coming from the EU. The UK government has published a draft no deal tariff schedule that re will reduce to zero the tariffs on 87% by value of imports into the UK, but tariffs will remain on things like agricultural products, certain ceramics um, and some other products. Businesses will also need to think about the product standards and regulations that they will need to comply with once those goods have crossed the border. And finally, think about the operational impact of these changes on the business. That could be short-term changes, for example, adjustments to shift patterns in order to facilitate stockpiling, or longer-term additional resource requirements to manage, for example, the extra customs compliance. So what are the actions that businesses can take now in order to prepare for Brexit? First, check your contractual terms, including the INCO terms that are used to understand what your role in the supply chain is, and in particular, if you will be responsible for importing and exporting. Second, apply for an EORI number if you have not already been also enrolled by the UK government, and also check if you need an EU one as well. Third, understand the information that will be needed for a customs declaration and speak to a customs broker about submitting those on your behalf. UK established businesses can also register for transitional simplified procedures to simplify the customs requirements around imports into the UK. Four, quantify what that additional duty cost could be and think about the impact that will have on your pricing. And finally, speak to suppliers and customers to understand their Brexit readiness and how that will impact on your preparations and identify if there are areas for collaboration with those third parties. For more insights and updates, visit our dedicated website at deloitte.com forward slash Brexit. Mm -hmm.